Hi, everyone. Welcome Hello. on this workshop dedicated to uh, robotics contribution to fruits and vegetables growing. I work for Agri Sudwest Innovation. My name is Pierre Compère, and I'm at least Agri Sudwest Innovation is one of FIRA's partners. Agri Sudwest Innovation is a cluster lo located in the southwest of France, gathering startups, SMEs, corporate firms, investors, research agencies, and universities, all stakeholders aiming to develop innovation for ag agriculture and food industries. So during this workshop, we have speakers from France, Australia, USA, Israel. And first stop in France with Fabien Arignon, CEO of CITIA. Welcome, Fabien. Uh, so CITIA is a French SME based in Nantes, in France, created in 1986, which has been working for the automotive and uh, aeronaut aeronautics industries, and which has been developing uh, robotics activities since 2014. Fabien, with you, we are going to discover Tractor, an autonomous hybrid farm tractor that shows a great adaptivity. Uh, Fabien, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pierre. Many thanks. Hello to everybody. So I will uh, talk about tractor in the market gardening area. Um, first of all, I want to introduce a little bit quickly, as Pierre said, uh, about CITIA. So CITIA is French SME, and we, we developed uh, EC standard machine since uh, more than 30 years. And we have been involved with uh, aeronautic and automotive industry. And we launched a robotic department since 10 years now. And uh, in 2000, uh, end of 2014, we launched uh, what will become Tractor last year. So um, I'm really happy to, to show you how our Tractor is working. Um, we, we had a small technical problem corresponding to some video. I can't talk on some video. I was supposed to, to show you more videos than that. We will try to make it uh, as best as, as it is. So I show you a first quick video and then I explain you everything, but I can't talk on this video. So I come back in, in two minutes explaining you what you are seeing right now. So you will see tractor video for one minute. And That's okay, we can can't see. hear me. Okay. Et donc, on m'entend plus. Et non. Eh oui. Bon, c'est pas très long. qualité pas ouf. J'espère que c'est mieux en vrai. J'ai l'impression que ça va accélérer. On arrive à comprendre quand même bien le principe. Ouais, bah, c'est l'avantage de la vidéo. <rire> Peut-être qu'il faut que tu reprennes la main, euh, Fabien, parce que c'est vraiment pas terrible, je suis désolé. Ouais, euh, c'est ah, la qualité qu'on voit là Ouais. Je t'invite okay. à reprendre la main, peut-être faire peut quelques commentaires. Ok. Ok, je, je reprends. So sorry for that. The quality of the video wasn't so good. So we discussed with Fabien, and maybe it's better for him to explain the functionalities of Tractor, this hybrid and versatile tractor. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, Pierre. Um, as the quality of the video on the platform is not so good, um, you can come to the city booth, or you can go on uh, on YouTube. Uh, uh, channel of CITIA, which is a uh, CITIA Applied Innovation, and you will find some videos explaining how Tractor is working. The most important thing that you is that you is that you need to know is that Tractor is a transition machine for agriculture because um, 
right now is working with existing implement. So you can start mm -hmm. working with your with your implement right now, and you can go helping helping by tractor to go for to the new methods that that are coming right now. Uh, the most important thing that you will see uh, tractor is hybrid. So you can work 24 hours a day. He is multi crops. So he can work in market gardening. He can work for three crops. He can work for one yard also. And and he is also multi multi implement. So this is uh, very um, uh, actual machine helping you to 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 go to the um, accurate agriculture. Um, then uh, tractor is very involved inside its economical system. That means that um, we are working with implement manufacturer using the implement that can be adapted as usual on on tractor. Um, I was supposed to show you another video explaining you how the implements are going on tractor, but I will try to make it with this picture and show you with the other picture later. But you can input um, implements between wheels, like it is, is there in the red stuff over there, and or you can have a three inch point at the rear, like a classical tractor, I would say. So CTI has got also, of course, distributor. We start our distribution network this year. So co corresponding to COVID, uh, we have some delays corresponding to the worldwide distributor distributor network, but it is on the way. Everybody wants to use Tractor. And uh, then we are also included and speaking with a lot of people, making a making lot of... Uh, agriculture application i've got a bad nose i hope that everybody does not hear it um, and uh, of course we are uh, working on the new application and new service too that everybody can use tractor in the close future what you need to understand about tractor is sum up in this in these uh, pages in fact tractor is adaptive to all crops to all market because it's got three type of size but it, it is the same machine possible okay for us corresponding to CTI it's exactly the same machine and then you've got some variable track and you just change the size of some post inside and you've got three type of machine so with this range of tractor you are able to do all agriculture possibility Okay. But I'm just so, to sure to understand what you're saying. Uh, I'm buying one tractor and, uh, and actually have three different ranges with one machine. That's correct. Well, you choose you choose your range, but I mean it is the same okay. machine. Okay, it okay. is the same machine okay. itself. So there is just only three posts to change. You change the length of it, and then you've got a variable track each time. But then it is adaptive to several type of market. Okay, uh, the smallest good. one are for one yard, the largest one are more for vegetables or uh, other, uh, other field crops also, okay? And midi size, it's between, it depends, depends of customer. But it is the same machine anyway, so it's easy for us to, to do the production and it's easy also to do demonstration, okay? It's always the same machine, okay? And... Um, and something which is very important, we've got a large possibility of traction. We've got, we are using the existing implement, so it's as usual as say, uh, agriculture people. It's easy for them to, to add implement and to use it. And uh, I can't sh show you how easy it is to, to program it. It was in the movie that I can't show you. Let's try, um, let's try uh, another video, Fabian. Let's try it. Uh, let's try. Let's, let's, yeah, let, let's try it. Okay, I try. I try. I try. Just in case. Fingers crossed. Yeah, 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 yeah. How is the quality? I think you can see it right now, but maybe you're not yeah, hearing me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. 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 yeah.
Ah non, je peux pas, putain. Excuse-moi. Bah, on entre dans ce problème. <rire> Là, on ne peut pas l'annoncer en fait, et ça va être long. Ça va être pour long, le coup, on, voit, on, voit bien, on comprend beaucoup mieux euh, ce que c'est là, du coup, tracteur. Et juste, Fabien, que je comprenne bien, euh, oui. en fait, je n'ai pas tout à fait compris ta réponse. J'achète un tracteur et je peux changer la taille sur mon exploitation, ou la taille, je la, je la définis au moment où j'achète le tracteur et Tu la définis au moment où tu l'achètes, mais tu as trois tailles, mais grosso modo, en production, c'est la même machine pour nous. Il y a juste trois poteaux okay. qui changent. Okay. Voilà, en fait, c'est, c'est, c'est tu choisis ta taille à, à l'achat et après tu as une nouvelle variable qui permet quand même certains réglages autour de cette taille-là. Okay. Autour de la taille achetée, okay. si tu veux. C'est pour ça que. C'est normal, c'est normal, c'est normal. Mais là, ça dure 5 minutes, euh, donc j'aurai pas le temps de finir après derrière. C'est compliqué. <rire> c'est compliqué. On est, on est d'accord, désolé de faire ça, on découvre en même temps. <rire> Peut-être que ça va suffire euh, du coup. Euh, Je vous en veux pas, mais j'ai peur que ce soit long derrière l'écran. Oui, mais je, c'est pour ça que je t'invite qu'il faut peut-être que tu reprennes la main là maintenant qu'on a compris euh, un peu mieux comment ça marchait. Ouais, alors j'ai, j'ai juste à parce que on va le voir fonctionner un peu dans le champ et puis après je reprends la main. D'accord. Je vais lui faire 50 à l'écran. Euh... Faisons ça comme si que tout était normal. <rire> ce sera plus agréable pour les participants. Bien sûr, on va essayer. Show me the gun. <rire> exact, exact. Là, il va rentrer dans son rang, et que, voilà, il bouge un peu et je le coupe. Mais juste qu'on voit un tout petit peu le travail parce que c'est le but quand même. Et je coupe. Non, 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 non. 20 secondes, je coupe. Et il me restera donc 7 minutes pour terminer à peu près. Oui, on prendra le temps qu'il faudra, t'inquiète pas. Ça va aller. Ça va aller. Il y a une, juste un, un gros plan vidéo là, et puis un ah mince plan d'après. Voilà. Et puis là, j'arrête. Genre là, on laisse deux secondes de plus, et je reprends. So back to you, Fabien. We've seen, we, thanks to uh, this video, uh, some functionalities and. Uh, Actually, tractor working. More comments on this uh, machine. Yeah, so you've seen a tractor at work, and um, and uh, once again, so you, you see the the different range you can ask directly when you when you order the tractor, mini, midi, or maxi, and on each machine you've got variable track, okay, and. Uh, So we've got this motorized va- variable tract on each machine, helping you to go open field, to go greenhouse, to go anywhere, okay? And it's easy to implement uh, tools. And we've got also uh, motorized variable height like that. You are able to install uh, new implement, new possibility, or maybe you have got some Uh, elevated crops and uh, so we are able to go on any type of crops with this configuration. So as I said before, you can see some uh, some implement installed on our three each point and uh, we have very large possibility to to install implement. Uh, first of all, we we have hydraulic uh, power unit helping you to put your hydraulic uh, implement, some mechanical ones, of course. And oh, it's it's working alone, <laughs> and uh, electric one also. Uh, so we are working also, with, as I said before, with implement manufacturer helping you working with the existing implement from now and working with them. Uh, to give you the, the smartest uh, implement for the next future. Um, so here yeah, I was supposed to have another video and um, maybe the best is to try to, to answer some question. Um, sorry if it was uh, not so <laughs> well presentation, but uh, do not hesitate to, to contact me just after or or later to have more details on that. That's all so right. Thank you very much, Fabien. Yeah. I, I have actually one question for you. How many partners sure. have you uh, to be able to 
um, connect Tractor with other equipment? How many partners? Uh, have you, is it just a few partners or have you got many, many partnerships with uh, big companies or small uh, uh, manufacturers? In fact, Tractor is involved in many community. Um, we are involved in scientific uh, community. Uh, if I've got one minute, maybe I can talk about what we call Tractor Lab. Oh, oh. Uh, it's, it's an open program for scientific people. And um, uh, we launched a few, few weeks ago for the FIRA, the Tractor Lab machine. I mean, you can buy a tractor 100% open in Ross, uh, dedicated to uh, to for research uh, academy or university, and we are making a lot of partnership around the world like that on the scientific point. But we do the same for implement manufacturer. Uh, the the aim the aim is to have energy efficiency, because it's no sense to still working with the implement. Uh, corresponding to the job they have to do now. And this is the most important uh, advantage of robotic. I mean, we can manage and save energy of the future. So it will be the energy of people corresponding to the penibility, but it will be also a lot of, of energy that will become very expensive in the next future. And we have also large uh, partnership with distributor people uh, all over the planet. Uh, we have also uh, a lot of connection with some startup who want to develop new application uh, that will be the, the future option of Tractor in the next few years. So we are at a, at a cross section of agriculture and we are discussing with a lot of, lot of, lot of people. So we are really happy uh, making this and try to give the, the best machine for uh, daily work of all our agriculture people. Yes, Fabien, thank you. We, we understand your big ambition. I have uh, another question for you. Um, how do you navigate fully autonomously indoor? How do you keep high precision, precision when the robot is parked in a building or in a greenhouse? That is a very good question. You need to come to Isn't see it. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's work well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, we have many sensors on the machine and we not we have a strategy working, and we have not only one strategy working at the same time. We are always playing with several systems, uh, and like that, we are reliable and very accurate because we have some symmetric precision. So come to see it. Come to see it. <laughs> so okay, so we there was uh, some some troubles, but we understood that um, actually uh, tractor can navigate indoor thanks to uh, sensors um, that are working at the same times. Just to be sure to understand, uh, is tractor already available on the market, and in which country? And it, that will be my last question for you. Um, for the moment, we, we sell it in France and in some and abroad like Australia. But we are we are expanding quite quickly, and um, but we will always go through our distribution network. Okay, so I mean we are expanding the distribution network, and then the distribution network is expanding the customer because for us it's no sense to sell the machine if there is not the good service with. So it's very important to get the good services using this kind of machine. Thank you, Fabien. It was very clear. I, just to remind uh, the attendees that you are the CEO of uh, CITIA. CITIA, a French SME based in Nantes, and uh, that has great ambition, as we, as we understood. Thank you very much. Let's move on to five-minute pitches, and we'll start with a pre-recorded video of Salah Sucarier from Ageris Company. We'll discover... Uh, Azure is digital farm hand, an easily adaptable long endurance electric platform fitted with smart sensing and tools for real-time crop and soil intelligence and automated weeding. Salah Sukaya will be with us after the video if we have qu some questions. And just let's go to Australia now. Agiris is a field robotics company. We build low-cost solar electric platforms for the horticulture industry. 
So Igera spun out of the University of Sydney in April 2019. Uh, at the University of Sydney, we had about 10 years of R&D funding, looking at robotics and AI for the horticulture industry. And in April, when we spun it out, our focus was to commercialise that technology. The Digital Farmhand is our first product. It's a solar electric platform. It can operate for up to 15 hours a day. It's for the vegetable industry, in particular the lettuce and brassicas. Some of the features include real-time machine learning, uh, intelligent tools, which can do green on green weeding and also individual plant spraying. can do autonomous road following and end of turn autonomously without the need for any GPS. And it has a number of autonomous safety features on board and that can detect people present, for example, along the roads. The main requirements for the farmers have been around reduction in labour costs as well as reduction in chemical use. The digital farmhand, as an example, does both. It is present on farm most of the day, collecting crop information, providing digital agronomy services to the farmer, as well as being able to remove weeds and minimise the amount of chemicals that get used on farm. The Digital Farmhand is a very modular robot. It can adjust to different types of rows, both vegetable and tree crops. It has real-time machine learning capability and we can learn to different types of vegetables and fruits, for example. So it has a worldwide benefit and that's how we designed it. Quite an impressive uh, machine, uh, robots. Uh, we'll have some questions for you, uh, Salah Sakaria, just um, in a few moments. Uh, let's go now to uh, USA and please welcome Pauline Conteneur from, from Farmwise. Pauline, you are a business strategist at Farmwise, a 50 people company born in 2016 and based in the USA. And with you, we are going to discover Titan FT35. A uh, weeding robot specialized in leafy greens and cold crops. Pauline, the floor is yours. All right. Hi, everyone. So I'm, I'm Pauline. I run strategy at Farmwise. Uh, We're an American farm robotics company. Uh, we deploy automated mechanical weeders for vegetable farms in California and Arizona. I'm going to start my slide for you guys. There we go. Um, we are in business to help um, vegetable farmers deal with the demographic, societal, and regulatory changes that they are going through today. And uh, we want to empower them to come out of this transition stronger. Um, here on these pictures, you can see our latest robot generation, Titan FG35. Um, Titan consists of both a self-propelled diesel power tractor um, and a smart implement that uses deep learning to detect crops from weeds, um, to locate the stem of each crop that we encounter. Um, and then it removes mechanically the weeds um, as we go. Um, it removes the weeds with blades, 
uh, custom blades that we design in house and that are adapted to the various field conditions that we encounter. Uh, I had a very nice video for you guys, but it'll be for another time. Um, meanwhile, I am just going to show you my second little slide. Um, so Titan has been designed to cover between 15, between 10 to 15 acres a day. Um, that changes, of course, depending on soil conditions, weed and crop density, uh, which is something that you've been hearing a lot over the past few days at FIRA. Um, we work in the outdoors. There is a lot of factors we don't have control over as the robot provider. Um, and so we are, you know, doing our best to really work with those elements. Um, Titan is operated by a human person, a human operator equipped with a tablet. Um, this, this person is here essentially for supervision and quality control. Um, we are today offering a fully automated, um, integrated service to our customers. Um, we believe that service model is really today allowing us to offer a win-win situation to farmers we work with. Um, we, they have full flexibility over uh, using our service or not. Um, they are also have access to the latest upgrades on the robot. And on our end, we're really able to have a faster go-to-market strategy and have you know, everyday field hours. Um, and those are learnings definitely on our end to improve the robot as we go. Um, in return of each acres that we wheat for them, we get paid a fee and um, we take care of the rest, which is transportation, operations, and maintenance. Uh, today, so it's robot we, as a service, not selling uh, units. It's, exactly, robot as a service, we're not selling units. Um, I think moving forward, we are very interested in looking at other business models or combinations of business models, but for now, um, as the young company that we are, uh, it makes total sense. And, and it's the way we think we can deliver the best value to the people we serve. Um, we are uh, working on two families of crops, uh, leafy greens and cold crops, as you mentioned, Pierre. Um, so that's all your varieties of lettuce, cauliflower, broccoli, celery, Brussels sprouts. We're adding cabbage and artichokes to our model. Um, and lots of surprises for 2021. Um, we're working um, with about a dozen customers in the central coast of California and the southern desert of California in Arizona. Uh, we'll be deploying a dozen of units in 2020. Um, the, the beauty of working in those areas means that we work all day um, and all year long, uh, which also you know, contributes to making the product better, faster. Um, Day and night, right I now. Guess. Yeah, uh, definitely. It's uh, it's an interesting use case um, to be working with t autonomous um, kind of self-propelled robots um, that uses deep learning and all kinds of cameras. Uh, night operations works work actually really great for these machines. Um, yeah, so right now we're not necessarily leveraging twenty-four hour operation, um, but but getting closer to that. Um, in terms of uh, future projects or things we are particularly excited about at FarmWise right now is data. So um, we are collecting, like everyone who is presenting a robot today, we are all collecting data metrics on the field that allows us to do the job that we do with quite a big success. And this, we believe this data is power and this data is information, potentially actionable information to our farmers. And so we're really excited to dig deeper into essentially the value or the use case behind the data that we collect. So working on a dashboard to give this data back to our farmers. Um, and then we're also very interested in, in seeing how all the technologies that we are leveraging today to weed can uh, bring value to other and optimization to other farming operations that happens throughout the growing cycle. Um, they might be spraying, fertilizing, or stuff like that. Um, so really interested in you know, digging deeper in the power of uh, detecting crops from other plant species, locating the crops with a high degree of precision, and
kind of planning an actuation in real time with a high degree of precision. Um, and with that, I think I'm, I'm, oh, I'm done and I'm happy to answer any questions or you have my contact email somewhere. Feel free to, to reach out. We're always happy to talk about what we do. Thank you, Pauline. I'll have more questions for you in a moment. But now it's time to welcome Dror Erez from Automato Robotics based in Israel after the USA. Let's go to Israel. And with Dror, we are going to talk about um, Automato Robotics affordable robots for harvesting greenhouse tomatoes. Dror, the floor is yours. Hi. Nice to meet you all. My name is Dror from Israel, Automato Robotics. Uh, I, I wanted to start with the video, but uh, as I, I can't speak during the video, I'll try to give you some head-ups before. So uh, we in Automoto want to help solve the international labor crisis in agriculture by providing affordable robots for every farmer. Uh, and uh, actually, agriculture and farmers have a huge problem. Uh, people don't want to work hard anymore. Uh, so uh, agricultural tasks are difficult, boring, badly paid, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, farmers got a problem. All that is happening uh, while the population is growing, demand for food is increasing, so we want to help the farmers, help the population, and make agriculture sustainable again. We decided to focus on passive environments rather than active greenhouses. Passive uh, environments uh, mean uh, means net houses, greenhouses, polytunnels, etc. And they make up almost 90% of the greenhouse hectare age in the world, with more than 5 million hectares. Now, there are currently no robotic solutions for them, nor are there any developments for that segment. So now I want to play the video. Uh, and, uh, yes, you let's and see some you... images of your robot. Yeah, so, so uh, you, you'll see uh, that in the uh, video. Launch it. Load it. Yes. Yes, so a robot to be launched in 2021. So you're about to get yeah. into the market. Yeah, with the spring robot, but but I'd like to continue to, to explain uh, some more things. So sure, uh, sure, sure. Can I go? On? Can I go on? Yep. Yes, back to okay, the so, slides. So, okay, I hope I, I, mean that, I hope you could see uh, that the cornerstone of our solution is a robot platform that can drive in off-road conditions and can map. Uh, navigate, drive autonomously in a greenhouse. 
with no previous infrastructure. That, that's important. Eh? It is controlled by a mobile application, you could see. And you could see also the video, uh, in the video the mapping process and the drive payload probe plan, uh, whatever the task is. Now, uh, the robot can be fitted. That's very important. The robot can be fitted for many tasks to support the growth cycle within the greenhouse by carrying different robot uh, attachments, meaning robot applications, which uh, implement each a different greenhouse task such as pollination, the leafing, spraying, detecting pests and diseases, and of course, harvesting. <laughs> so our, our first attachment uh, is a tomato harvester to increase the availability, the reliability, and the quality of the harvest uh, process. The robot detects, as you could see, the, the tomatoes decides which one uh, is ripe enough and harvested uh, using the manipulators. Our second attachment, in order to get faster to the, to the market, is uh, an autonomous sprayer, which allows more efficient and more precise spraying while keeping the, the workers away from the chemicals. It is still under development, as you could see, or I hope <laughs> you, you noticed that. Uh, this is a good example, by the way, of, of design and manufacturing a partnership with a spray company in, in, in this case. Uh, so, so I'll move to, to the uh, next slide. So finally, uh, therefore, we are we're presenting you one robot, which is actually three robots, uh, the robot platform uh, for greenhouses, uh, the tomato harvester, and the, spray, uh, the autonomous sprayer. Uh, this, the, the greenhouse market exists all over the world, but we decided to initially start in uh, Europe, uh, where the salaries can justify the robotization of the agricultural tasks. So sure. our first big market is, is Spain. Actually, uh, with the starting point of Almeria, in the south of Spain, which is the global largest greenhouse hub. Uh, so we developed the Almeria market uh, to the, a pre-pilot point, joining with the biggest cooperatives there. Uh, more about the robots. Now you can see uh, here the, the third one, because I didn't have room the previous uh, slide. So this is autonomous prayer. We've just returned a few hours ago from a greenhouse trial session. So uh, you'll be able to watch some relevant videos, new videos in, in our YouTube channel. Anyway, uh, I've chosen to dive into uh, the tomato harvester uh, features and price. Uh, so the tomato harvester, uh, the harvester uh, uses the robot platform I mentioned before. And is capable of mapping, then navigating, driving uh, within the greenhouse while de detecting and harvesting tomatoes. Uh, when the boxes are full, it will drive to a convey in the central location of the greenhouse, unload the full boxes and load new empty ones. Uh, we aim to a price of about 32,000 euros, uh, which is quite uh, affordable. And that's the main idea, to make uh, affordable robots for the, the mass market of uh, farmers. And uh, this robot will return the investment after one, one, one year and a half, depending on the uh, national subsidies rate. Uh, and finally, in any case, we are the only robot for passive environments, uh, which, as I mentioned before, counts for almost 90% of the greenhouse market. So I think I'll stop here and uh, we'll let you ask some questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dror. Uh, let's have a short Q&A session. And the first question will be for uh, Salah Sakarie, Sukarie from Ajaris uh, company. Uh, Salah, we've seen uh, in your videos that, um, uh, actually we've understood that uh, um, your platform works without GPS, if I'm uh, not wrong. And some of the, the attendee was uh, wondering how do you follow crop lines and turn around without GPS actually? Uh, the, uh, thank you for the question. The system uses uh, both GPS and also row following. Um, okay. It can use either one or both at the same time. We use both because of redundancy uh, purposes. Uh, but it does row following by using a vision system that looks at the bed in front and the rows in front. And it uses that as a guidance system to follow down the row. Um, and uh, it identifies when the end of the row is happening using the same type of vision system. And the automated turn is because the row widths are the same, and so you know how far you need to turn. So you turn into the next row, and then again, the vision system follows the row again to connect in and then follow beyond that. So that's how it uses it without GPS. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Another question for Pauline. Pauline, you mentioned that um, you have around 10 robots for large-scale farming. You have ambition to diversify and to get more crops in more geographies. What about smaller robots in small-scale farming? Is that a perspective for you? Yeah, I think down, down the line, uh, it's something we are considering. Uh, we are very aware that sh should we enter the European market, uh, we're probably not working with the same surfaces per grower or the same you know configuration. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to like dig deeper into those requirements. Um, for now, the focus remains um, like rather large scale operations farm um, based. In, in California and Arizona. Yeah, North America. Okay, thank you. And maybe mm -hmm. one last question for uh, Draw, and I'm sure that the farmers will welcome, in a few seconds, we'll have some more questions. Uh, what about Draw, what would be the, the, the next step for you, actually? Um, for now, is it only indoor farming that you are focused on, or the picking uh, robot you, you present us could be used uh, in uh, outdoor farming? No. Uh, we, we decided to start with uh, this greenhouse world, which is huge. So uh, I, I believe we will expand uh, the uh, robot capabilities and attachments to handle uh, uh, more uh, more uh, steps, more more, more uh, uh, stages during the, the the growth cycle within a greenhouse. Uh, and I think that not only uh, developing the attachments uh, by ourselves, but joining and cooperating with multiple, not multiple, but few uh, uh, companies which are already developing robots, but they develop only the applications. Because most, most of the startups uh, had the uh, active greenhouse mar uh, market, which, which pays better, but uh, counts only for 10% of the greenhouse uh, world. And, uh, and uh, we decided to expand that to all the other 90%, percent uh, it, it is the, the big market. And uh, we, we actually will we serve as an enabler for those uh, robot applications to serve also within the uh, passive greenhouse world. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys, for uh, those uh, pitches and presentation. Let's have a chat with um, uh, farmers, and um, that will, um, they will share their, their feedbacks and their user needs. Uh, so I welcome Walt Duflock, uh, who is a farmer, but um, as well a VP for innovation uh, at the Western Growers Association. And I welcome as well Alain Panko. Alain, are you with us? Yes, we, you, you, you managed to, to be with us. So, Alain, you're managing the Betteravia farms in the USA as well. And uh, the first question to both of you would be, in a few words, could you explain or present your farming organization? And I'll start with Walt, for instance. Yes, hello. Thanks, Pierre. Um, so I actually uh, have a fifth generation farm in South Monterey County that does specialty crops uh, and wine grapes and cattle. Uh, and maybe more relevant, I'm, I'm actually the, uh, the vice president of innovation at Western Growers. And uh, so we represent 2,400 of the largest specialty crop growers in the Western half of the U.S. Um, okay, thank you. What about you, uh, Alain? Could you explain us your uh, farming, uh, your farm, present your farmer or your organization? Alain, are you with us? Unfortunately, we can't hear you. Okay, we'll try to, to get back to you a bit later on. Uh, Walt, what would be your first impressions um, listening to the uh, presentation and pitches? You know, it's interesting. I think um, th those are some really good technologies, and I'm familiar with uh, a couple of them from uh, direct interactions. I get to talk to a lot of startups uh, with my work with accelerators and and i would say where i'd like to see all the robot companies get to is less of the technology show and more of the business and and integrating a lag show and so i just spent a week down in uh, coachella and imperial valley in southern california looking at eight different crop types right peppers and citrus and and um, leafy greens growing romaine fields 
Uh, we were in date fields with, with large palm trees, just working with the technologists and entrepreneurs on uh, how this, this robotic thing's gonna happen because everyone knows this and it's part of the presentations, you, you can hear it. Labor is a real problem. It's getting more expensive, it's heavily regulated, it's hard to find. And, and I think what I heard from the growers all over the Southern California region, and these are people who farm in you know, Northern California and then rotate down to Southern California, they're required to get 12 months worth of coverage. So they farm all over. And what they're telling me is the labor force is aging, it's getting more expensive. And that is the opportunity for the robot entrepreneurs to really come into the, the, to the field and do good work. So I think what I would push all the presenters hard on is, remember with, with the farmer, the way they're evaluating the robot is how much labor can you save them or how much labor can you remove the need for, not always to take them off the farm, but to give them the ability to do other things. So I think these, these are great. And I'm seeing real traction in single purpose uh, robots. So it's interesting to see the platform approach. So what I'm seeing is, you know, weeding robots, thinning robots, harvest robots, robots that can do one thing are able to, in the mind of the farmer, play against the economics, right? So if weeding is 150 or 200 or $250 an acre, how much can you do it for either as a service, as you saw, or how many hours before your capital equipment, your robot, uh, can pay off? That's the math that the farmers are looking for. And, um, you know, you, you, I, I can't stress that enough. If you if you have a mm. farmer conversation about the technology, you're not focusing on their problem, their economics. And I think it slows down the sales process from what I've heard. Thank you, Walt. It's interesting because we had this discussion between the race between uh, autonomous tractor with uh, some modules or units, automotive units you can plug uh, into uh, onto uh, this tractor as uh, uh, Fabien presented with the tractor uh, versus the fully autonomous robot, one task robot. So it was interesting to have this uh, discussion here as well. Alain is back with us. Alain, are you here? Alain, are you here? Yep. Unfortunately, I'm not sure. <laughs> we can't hear you. Sorry, Alain. That's a shame. Maybe, Walt, uh, another question for you. Y you told us that you, you were using, uh, you were actually a user of some robots. Could you explain which your robots are you, you, are you using and how did you get in touch with uh, robot providers? Yes, yeah, so one of the growing partners that we work with was an early adopter of thinning technology. So, you know, geez, 12 years back now, I believe. And uh, it was a direct connection with the farmer and uh, took a few years for the value proposition to get proven, right? And the initial value proposition, and this is good for, I think, the robot startups to know is, hey, we'll replace your entire thinning crew, which is a 25-person crew in a lot of California operations, with a robot that will do the thinning. And it turns out that y you do remove the need for that 25 person crew. And it was, it took a couple of years to play all this out. I mean, farm tech takes a long time to test and to, and to get proven. But what, what we found was you don't remove the cost of the 25 person crew, you replace it with a three person crew that then watches the robot, manages the field operations and works with the process and gets all the data and all the, and make sure it's working properly. So. It's not 25 to zero, it's 25 to three. And the three, there's a couple of challenges. They're higher skilled, uh, they're higher cost, and they're harder to find. Um, and as, as the grower told me when we were talking a couple of years ago now, I said, so thinning, how's it working? He said, he said, if I knew what it would take to get to here, I may never have started. That said, now that we're here, I can't imagine life without the thinning machine. So I think that's... Uh you know, that, that's the reality of, of, of farm tech. Okay, Alain, as soon as you, you're with us, please feel free to, to raise a hand in a way and, and to interrupt our conversation. Uh, back to you, Walt. Uh, we've understood that you're not only a farmer, but um, as well um, a VP of innovation for the Western Growers Association. And you mentioned uh, some business acceleration uh, activity. 
And we have a question, how Western growers can support robot startups to scale up business uh, in California? Well, that's a great question, and I'm glad to hear it because that's, that's my focus. I joined two months ago uh, from the accelerator side, from the Thrive side, which is one of the ag tech accelerators that, that, uh, that does a decent job, I think. And, and what we're working on at Western Growers is really becoming a vetting service and becoming um, a pathway to the farmer. So for the startups that join the Western Grower Center for Innovation and Technology, it's a great launching point for international startups to come to the U.S. market, to come to the specialty crop market. Um, it's our job, and my team is focused on getting you access to the North America market and to the specialty crops. It turns out that the farmers are overwhelmed. There's a lot of early stage startup funding. There's a lot of great entrepreneurs out there and, and robots. But the farmers, you know, the thinning call that I mentioned 12 years ago, that was one of a handful. Now there's hundreds of calls. And what the farmers are doing is they're looking for someone to be the, the trusted advisor, the gatekeeper, if you will, to manage the startup funnel to them. And they're working with two groups of folks, uh, partners, channel partners like equipment dealers, certified crop advisors, depending on what, what kind of product you're offering. If it's robots, it's probably the equipment dealers or the labor contractors that can provide, provide the labor with the equipment. Um, and, and they will tell them, look at the weeding companies, pick the five best, we'll test and I'll buy from you. And a second channel is they're working with groups like Western Grower to, to be that pathway to the farmer. So our, our growers are telling me very directly, I can't talk to 100 startups a year. It's not going to happen. So I need a more efficient mechanism. So what I would recommend is, is folks at the robot startups, reach out to me. Let's get connected. Find me on LinkedIn. Find me via email. It's wdeflock at wga.com. And let's start the conversation because when you're ready, uh, we will have farmers ready for you and we'll have channel partners that are ready for you because if we can do a better job of vetting the startups on the way to the farmer, we'll make the, the market better for both sides. And what would be the counterpart for you? What would be what? The counterparts for you, because you're going to spend some time to uh, make some acquaintance between uh, uh, robot companies and farmers. What would be the, the benefit from, for uh, the Western Growers Association? Oh, Right. No, that's a great question. So what's in it for us? Well, the good news is we're treating this like an accelerator without investment. Uh, and the premise is that if the 2,400 growers of Western growers, and these are, again, some of the biggest names, you know, uh, out there in farming, if they are benefiting from automation, um, then that, that payback on our efforts is, is more valuable than an investment return. So we treat it the same as, as an accelerator process. We, filter out, like we're, we're taking a look at all the harvest robot companies now, and we're filtering those out into a small group we'll work with, and we'll be expanding that group over time. And and the, the ROI for Western growers is just more automation and more harvest automation in fields. That's it. If the grower gets a better result for their growing operation, that's a win for us. I have another question for you, uh, Walt, and maybe the other ones could uh, uh, react as well. From a EU point of view, where do you see the area with the largest opportunity for automation or largest unaddressed uh, area of innovation? What would be uh, the next step? I, yeah. Uh, so I would say there's, think about it from a robot's perspective, there's three components, right? There's the imaging component that has to see all the right uh, pieces in the field. There's the AI machine learning component that has to then interpolate that into actionable moves. And then there's the robot arm. And I feel like there's a big move that's starting. We're kind of on the front end of it where we can do images at scale and we're working on some things to help with that. Um, and then we can do AI at larger scale. Um, I do think the robot, the harvest arm, for example, the thinning arm, the cultivating arm, those are all gonna be hard for a while. But I do think there's some major moves getting made that we'll see the, no pun intended, the fruits of in the next couple of years um, for both imaging and uh, AI. And you can see the AI field horizontally making huge strides. Some of that's trickling down to ag, which is great. And just to give you guys a number, this is from uh, my friend Manish Katari, who runs SRI. 
Uh, and, he, and they helped spin off Abundant Robotics, one of the successful companies in the space doing apples. He said it took 100 million images to differentiate dogs versus cats for AI. And mm-hmm. no, no offense to animal lovers, but dogs versus cats, not nearly as complex as a field environment with sun, water, light conditions, plants, weeds, and all kinds of different plants and weeds. And I mean, in some fields, what would be a plant in one case is a weed in another, right? And so the complexity around ag tech is huge. We're looking and I'm seeing progress in doing image libraries at some scale and in doing AI work that can cross over plants, right? So those are those are two areas, I think, in robots that are, that are ripe for change and you're seeing efforts come. Thank you, Walt. Let's have some reaction from the robot manufacturers. Maybe uh, Pauline for a start. Have you got, uh, I don't know, one or two words in reaction of what just uh, what Walt just said? Yeah, I think uh, Walt just got it right. Um, there is a huge opportunity in the images that we collect and uh, the power of building deep learning model to interpret this data. And um, yeah, I would, I would agree that uh, probably harvesting crops is, is a very underserved uh, I'm talking specialty crop, so the lettuce, uh, cauliflower, broccoli are still hand harvested um, and mostly, right? And those represent like thousands of dollars per acres for growers. Um, and yeah, I, I hope I hope we can work on that very soon. Thank you, thank you, Pauline. A draw, maybe some a word or two. Yeah, I I I was. Uh very uh, connected to, uh, i'm very connected to what one said uh, before uh, regarding the affordability or the uh, the uh, financial calculation which is the main driver for the farmer to buy or not to buy not the not technology not uh, new or nice things only the 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 uh, financial uh, question we started from that point uh, calculating the the uh, how, how much can cost a robot and, and, and that should lead, I, I believe, that should lead the, the uh, robotic companies in order to make uh, these this, uh, robotics uh, or these robots uh, affordable for everybody. Uh, otherwise, nobody will buy them. So that's the main driver. Thank you, Dror. Not, what about you, yeah, Sam? I, I actually have a question. Sorry, sorry, Dror. You were saying, yeah, you're good. So um, actually, uh, Stella, I have a question for you. Is Azure's robot already available in uh, on the European market? Uh, the answer is no because of, of certification, although we have a number of growers that we're working with at the moment now to try and look at how we introduce it into the European market. Okay, great. Maybe some, some word on the reaction of what Walt uh, said before. Yeah, I think I think Walt's comments, I mean, they were, they were spot on. They were exactly what I think um, we all needed to hear, we all understand. I, I think in return, there's also some questions about how farmers can help standardise activities on farm to make it easier for robotics to be introduced. So I think there's a reverse uh, element as well. Uh, I think for us, we can, we can spend a lot of time building these robots and making them work, but if, if there's more standards as well that happen on farm, it makes it easy for all of us to introduce robotics on farm. Yeah, you're not talking about only about uh, adaptive or adaptation of robots to the system, but to adapt the system at the ro- f- f- for the robots. Uh, thank you, Stella, for this comment. And Fabien, uh, you'll have the the end word, or <laughs> you'll have the opportunity to conclude this session. Thank you, Pierre. Um, to, to answer to Walt uh, and to to be in the same way that uh, all people there, I, I think all the answers are there. It's just a combination of all of this, in fact, because uh, the robot has to, to work efficiently, has to save uh, accurate data, has to give good orders at a good time, and do the mix of all of this to give all the good historical data that will help to change methods and to improve our way of uh, making things. So all the answers are there, and then it's just a return about investment and uh, how everybody is going in. So we are ready for that world, so let's talk about it. 
I think well, you have many, many, many uh, contacts and many, uh, many people uh, coming to to you to to have some discussion and to discover uh, the uh, Californian market. You offer to open for um, ag tech startups. Thank you all, guys, for uh, these uh, talks. Thank you very much. I hope, uh, and fortunately, we, we have some technical issues. But uh, anyway, I'm pretty sure that the key messages were shared with uh, the attendees. And I wish you all a very nice end of FIRA. And um, yeah, take care and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.